All right, so today we're coming to you with another episode of Auto Glass Tech Talk, and we're taking it out to Ohio, Zanesville, Ohio. And for y'all that don't know, that's somewhere near Columbus. We got the yeah. homie James Chapman with us. So tell us more about you, man. All right. Um, I started Glass in 03. Um, I work for a company that's been around for 81 years called Richardson Glass. It's in Newark, Ohio, a small town about 35 minutes uh, west of me. Um, I'm a master certified technician. I'm an instructor for the uh, Auto Glass University. Um, I competed twice in the Tech Olympics. Uh, other than that, I like cycling, backpacking, hiking, long watch on long walks on the beach, a candlelight dinner. You know the normal things. All right. Well, cool. You left out one important detail, man. Like, come on. One. Like, talk that talk. Tell us about your son just graduating from medical school. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This weekend, uh, he gets ready to go into residency. Um, he graduated from the Ohio University here in Ohio, obviously. Okay. Where else would it be, right? right. Um, yeah, he spent the last eight years committed to a uh, goal, and he accomplished it. So very proud of him. And my two daughters, uh, one's in college, and the other one's an HVAC uh, technician in training. She's uh, in high school in the trade school. So very proud sure. of all three of them. Shout out Thanks. to you for being a great example to your kids, man. Great example, great role model. Uh, um, they didn't thanks. get that from anywhere. So shout out to you. Uh, well, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Good work ethic. Nice. Yeah, well, good one, good we got to hustle, right? We got to yeah. hustle. Well, clearly you so taught them question. something, right? They're hustling, doing their thing, man. So shout out to all of them. Yeah, 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 for sure. Before we start, though, I've been watching a lot of your uh, podcasts, and Corey, I got a question. <clears throat> your No Better, Do Better. Did you get that from Russell Simmons' books? Nah, actually, nah. Uh, <laughs> I, got it from, I got it from Dion Sanders. <laughs> Deion Sanders. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Deion Sanders got a great quote. He said, "If you know better, you do better." But he also said, "If you uh, if you feel good, you do good. If you do good, it pay good." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. yeah that, so it came from Deion Russell, Sanders a long time ago. That's a Russell Simmons mantra as well. So yeah. you know, I I've read like uh, almost everything he's written. There's a couple books that I haven't uh, read, but I'm a big fan of his. So I thought, well, that's. I was like, man, I got a connection right there. I'll hook it up, but no, it yeah. didn't work. I dropped nah, the ball. That's a good connection, man, because if you know better, you do better. So, um, yes, sir. Shout yes, out sir. to everybody giving knowledge, man. Yeah. yeah. That's the main thing, man. Like, there's so much hate in this industry. Uh, we're real quick to call people hacks, but not show them love and say, hey, you know, there is a better way to do it. And then if they resist you, <laughs> you call them hack. But, right. like, there's so much hate in this industry, dude. Like, the minute you post something that you – kind of sketchy about or you're not sure about dude they tear you down yeah. it's like it is nasty in this industry and it's not just i'm not don't have a social media preference uh, presence really just strava and youtube yeah and i don't even really post anything on youtube but man they're like quick around here to you pull a windshield out and you know the guy that did it like a couple years ago and you're like man this dude's a hack but yet right. you don't reach out. Like I try to reach out via text and stuff. And obviously I get slammed for it. Like, oh, you don't know. You're you're a chump. You have no clue. And it's like, all right, well, then you just go, yeah, well, you know, do better work, hack. But yeah. dude, we need more love in this industry. We can't take on safe flight if we ain't all united. Yeah, you gotta be united. United, you stand divided, you fall, but always yes, just a simple reach out to somebody saying, Hey, like, hey, it's a different way. Or here's my perspective. You know, it's it's good yeah. constructive criticism is feedback to help people. Yeah. Yeah, I love I it think when we've people all done it. Yeah, and I, I think I love it when people tell me that. They're like, hey, you know, like, dude, you know, like, for example, in the Tech Olympics when uh, it was uh, 19 and there was some jovial poking about my mirror for getting it in the back seat, but I did not forget it in 21 in the back seat. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was known as the mirror man for a while, and it was well-deserved, but it was definitely jovial and with love that they were doing it to me. It wasn't like, man, you're not. You're not yeah. very smart, you know. It's just like, hey, dude, how you forget that? Like, ah, you know, the pressure of it. Right. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So let's go back to Auto Glass University. Say so you're an instructor there? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I just became an instructor. I just got my instructor certificate. Uh, I did it at Yellowstone Auto Glass in D.C. Okay. and in Nashville, Tennessee at Carlex. Okay. I did the, both of those classes. Um, basically, nice. I got my... Uh, certification at yellowstone doing the demonstration and the uh supervision so i'm ready to teach classes now what, what's in uh in tennessee you said you went to the carlex 
like the yes. Carlex plant. And, the plant, and dude. Class. Yeah, we got a tour afterwards. The, we got a tour afterwards of how they start with the raw materials and then they send it through the oven and then they turn it into flat glass and then they bow it and then they make windshields for Ford. It was it was an amazing experience because not only do you you get to understand where the part you're putting in comes from. Yeah. You know, you're like, hey, these guys, because we're just like what I was saying earlier with the love thing, we're quick to say, oh, that glass is a piece of junk or that glass. We don't realize there's a human behind that making everything happen. And right. to a point, they take pride in what they do. I know everybody at Carlex did. They check every 50 windshields with a template. And those guys are on top of it, man. Like they, And so if something slips through, to what's obvious to us is like, how did that slip through to them? It may not have been so obvious, and it was just a simple, you know, mishap that they just went through. Right. But that plant was amazing. Tour anybody can get to down to Nashville, or yeah, Nashville, Tennessee right. to Carlex, do it. It is amazing. They'll give you a tour. It's it's awesome. That's a that's really cool to hear, you know, because I think with the way the whole world has kind of gone with you know robotic everything and you know machines make everything now it's a it's, it's kind of cool to hear that carlex is still having people on the line you know running it doing everything and there there's a person behind that windshield you know right. yeah now like some of the brackets will get put on by hand like mirror buttons and stuff will get put on by a cnc machine unless they have a huge order come in and then They've got them set up doing it by hand. They put the lamination in by hand. They wow. trim it. They check it. Everything's ready to go. Wow. Yeah. Man, that sounds like an amazing experience, man. So shout out yeah. to uh, Carlex for putting on the um, putting on the tours and stuff. So if anybody in that area, check them out. Um, get a tour so you can see what it's like. Has anybody else ever done that either? If you yeah, have, somebody else did that. Below. Yeah, drop a comment below and let us know your experience. Yeah, I'm getting ready to drop here. So, um, yeah, nah, you good, man. You finna head yeah. out on the job? Oh, yeah. What it kind of job crazy. you got? Tell us more. What what job you finna go do? I am getting ready to go do a RV windshield, two windshields in an RV, and then a front cap in an RV, a, a fifth wheel. Woo! So, so are these yeah. gonna be hard jobs, or are these gonna be kind of easy? Uh no, these are gravy, man. Oh, these okay. are gravy. <laughs> These are great. So a couple RVs, you know, a, yeah. a few RVs first thing in the morning. It ain't nothing. That's well, just light work. True. With, well, with a skill set like yours, I imagine not. No, 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 no. What ha helps us is that uh, in Central Ohio and on the East Coast, there's very few companies. Sorry about that. There's very few companies who do RVs. Oh, and really? the fact that we are one of the companies that provide that service, I get to see and do a lot of RVs. So the more times you do something, the easier it becomes, you know, like it does take a thousand repetitions to make something habitual. Right. But for us, we've done so many of them. Now we do run into problems like every now and then on the Winnebago's you'll have rust um, and you'll have cracking of the fiberglass and some of the other ones and de uh, delamination of the, uh, okay, of the uh, gel coat that you got to deal with. But for the most part, RVs are no different. They're just bigger and heavier. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. So I saw a question recently on, online, right? Yeah. And somebody was asking, what was the hardest job you did? So I'm going to start with you, Jeff. What's the hardest job you've done thus far this year? Ooh. <clears throat> um, or maybe you I, haven't had one. You know, I haven't. I, I, I would probably have to say hard with perspective is it, the, the job wasn't challenging as in the work wasn't hard it was the fact that it had like a fifteen thousand dollar paint job on it oh, okay <clears throat> and i was doing a window on a 57 uh chevy okay and anybody who's done one of those putting that lower chrome on <laughs> is a butt pucker and especially with a expensive paint job where the car is getting ready to go to good guys so that was probably the nah. the, 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 the on, hardest thing I've done this year so far. Cool. Bolts under the dash. You can't over tighten yep. them. Crack the paint. And yeah, you gotta start. Gotta go to, the only job you gotta go to the chiropractor immediately after you're done. <laughs> your back is Love it. Love it. Yes, sir. But what about you, Drift? What's your uh, hardest and most challenging job this year? Man. Um, all right, I got I got one. My my most hardest challenging job this year so far was uh, I think it was like one of my first windshields here in Texas. It was on a 01 Silverado. Okay. Now Ooh. I, you know, with all the tools I have, everybody knows I got every tool in the book. 
this thing kicked my ass. I mean, this was this goes back to like original twelve seventeen shit where you're chiseling it out. Like, you know, it's just one of those ones. I, I don't know why. It was original windshield, brittle as all hell, you know, sat in the Texas sun every single day for, you know, 20 some years. Right. And finally, they needed a windshield on it. And uh, I got to be a lucky one to chisel that out. Right. So. <laughs> what about uh, you, guys? Had, What's the uh, intelligent job you've had? Uh, Tesla Model Y roof. Oh, okay. Straight up. And it's like what Jeff said, the because uh, we just got Tesla certified to handle all Tesla uh, jobs at the Easton store up here in Columbus. Damn, that thing's right away. Um, and we had we've done the three windows and the Y windows and they're not hard. It's just there's a lot that has to come off. Um, there's a lot that has to go in to get in the roof out. They've got the gravity stops, which isn't really a gravity stop front and back. They're more alignment pins on those. And then they've got a couple different like uh, metal roof rack attachments that you have to go around there, yeah. which anybody put a roof rack on a glass roof kind of weird me out anyways, but they have the option, I guess. Um, and then yeah. setting it, uh, because I'm so short, you know, I'm five, nine, but I got like these real little arms right. and the gentleman who works with me, he's like six, five, six, six with the wingspan, like crazy. So for him, it was nothing, but for me, it was a little difficult. I had to get up on a step stool and shimmy my way across to set it. Uh, but I'd say, you know, it's, it's what makes the job hard is when the cutout is hard. Mm -hmm. Um, the reassembly is not too bad because you've already experienced the crappiness taking it all apart and getting the glass out. Um, right. So when one fights you and you keep snapping cord, so you try wire and then wire snaps because the urethane's so sick in a spot or you catch that metal piece. And then it's like, well, there's glass in the front and glass behind it. And there's, uh, you know, the sides of the car. You don't want to hit those because they're just underlay moldings. It's like, well, a cold knife won't reach. And you don't want to use the express, so you just have to keep fighting and shimmying. And when a job, when a car takes 45 minutes to get the glass out, you're just defeated, and it makes it hard. You know what? Just, that, that reminds me of the um, the Jeep Renegades. I don't know if Jeff, you ever done back one? Glass, but... Back glass. You talking Dude. about the back glass on the Renegades? The the roof glass. I've yeah. done the roofs on the Renegades. The roof on those. Things. That's what it <clears> reminds hey, me back, of. Like you have to pull glass. out. The back glass on a Cherokee, with, when it has the anti pinch, it's like a little tube. Oh. It's like a, uh, the hydraulic pressure tube that goes around in there, and you got to take the lights and everything off the man. That yeah. stupid, uh, yep. stupid. Yeah, God, they, design man. Them, they design them for one time assembly, and then they they expect us to figure out how to get them out when it's our turn because we don't. Really well, have you know, on a lot of a lot of the newer the newer SUVs, the uh, technically you're supposed to change the whole lift gate if the yes. back glass breaks yeah, it's and people don't and people yeah people don't realize that like my wife has a nissan rogue and it's a composite oh, lift gate mm -hmm. you're not oh, supposed man. to remove the glass no it comes oh, pre-painted yeah. with the glass in it if you break it, it drives me nuts when the body shops call you to remove that window and i'm like bro it is not supposed to be removed you're not supposed to if it damages the gate you got to buy a new gate anyways it's composite yeah. there's no repairing it like oh yeah, you can exactly. it, but no are you why are you wasting the paint materials, the tape materials, and the fact that I made damage? The time and everything else. I, mm -hmm. I that's why I'm so glad I don't deal with body shops anymore. That's that was the biggest addition by subtraction in my life ever. I love shout the out body to Jay. Shop. Hey, sh shout out to Jay Lee. He kept kicking me in the ass, telling me to get rid of the body shops. <laughs> yeah, the smartest thing ever. Well, my dude, my dude down in Georgia, Aaron Bradford. Uh, you yeah. Might yep. I might want to have him on and then Waleed over at Yellowstone Auto Glass outside of D.C. He's he's another one that would be good to have on. Tons of knowledge between those two. But uh, he does a lot of higher-end cars at body shops and stuff. And just the stories we've shared and the things they'll ask him to do. Like the body shops I work for here in Ohio, we're kind of like uh, real rural. We don't have a lot of uh, – high-end stuff at the body shops the high-end stuff we do is actually in columbus so right. like our body shop works pretty simple i mean you do have your from time to time you'll have your uh you know your toyota part that the guy wants to argue with you because he can't reuse it he wants yeah. you to pull it but he use like dude this is a one-time use because the encapsulation gets damaged and you know and oh no put it back in then you got to explain to him it's like dude you guys are icar certified you know this but that's right. beside the point but yeah they body shops are a blessing when you're slow 
Yeah. But they're a nuisance when you're busy. Right. Yeah. They can be, yeah. Uh... Yeah. Well, yeah. So Aaron Bradford, I know you'd be watching these, man. We got to get you on the episode so you can uh, talk to us more about your experience in Georgia and body shops and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, like, between like, – the one of the greatest things that the Autoglass University and even and especially Autoglass Week has done has let me meet some really cool people. I met Jeff. I met Drift. I met you, Corey, last year when I was shooting the basketball uh, yeah. one year. So I met you there. Um, Aaron, he was a competitor of mine. We became really good friends. My wife and I went down and visited him and his wife because my wife and his wife are friends. Um, mm. You know, Waleed, uh, Jacob Scufa, he just finished the Nashville class. He's one of the newer guys into the industry. And I'm trying to push him to go to the Autoglass Week. He's a really talented tech for being so new into, I think he's a year and a half in or something like that. Right. So, like, you meet so many people that you develop bonds. Like, if I have a question, I call Jeff. Just like the roof cover I was having a question with. I call Air and I call. Because we don't have a centralized information center to tell you how things happen and <clears throat> yeah. rely on the people in your industry. Yeah. Now, Auto Glass Week is a good way to connect with people. You meet a lot of folks um, from different walks of life. They do things differently. You know, it's always a lot of information you can take in and take it for what it's worth. You can learn from it. Maybe you can give somebody else a pointer, but it's always a great way to connect with a bunch of random people from all over the world because people come from all over to uh, compete and just take you on the show. So it's a good spot. Um it's in San Antonio this year too, so it'll be. Um, I'm sure to get a lot of a lot of people there. You know, yeah, I, I gotta say the the Auto Glass Week is probably the only reason I'm here in Texas right now, just because of the connections I made. Shout out to Roberta, um, you know, just because of the connections I made and the people I met. You know, shout out to Jeff too, you know, for making that between us because he knew him beforehand. I mean, you know, it's a the the networking is unreal. You know, yeah. don't don't just go just to go look at a couple vendors and leave you know make make sure you're talking to people meet some people that you haven't seen yeah it, it's very beneficial yeah it's a lot to happen um they got the meetups during auto glass week um you can check every all the information out on autoglassweek.com but they got a meet and greet uh they got a cocktail hour they got uh the meetup groups and then everybody else be doing stuff throughout the show and then everybody going to eat at after the show so you can easily you know break bread and fellowship with a lot of people so um if yep. you're looking to go if you're on the fence go san antonio should be a good amount of people there um we'll all be there so you know well, i'm through. hoping to go i gotta talk to my boss saturday about lining everything out for me to compete again and go and you know like what corey was saying with all the classes and stuff on last episode was the certification like if you can go there and do the little you know classrooms <clears> that they have and get your certification or you can come to Autoglass University or even get with an experienced tech who could teach you and then you can get certified. Mm -hmm. That right there just shows your commitment to your profession. Yeah. And when you care enough to get certified, you care enough to work on someone's car and not damage it, man, in my opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. Nah, you're right. My opinion. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's up. So I'll be mindful of everybody time. I asked all y'all one final question before we get out of here. What you working on this week, Jeff? Um, I have a, uh, I have, I have a 64 Chevelle convertible that okay. just got out of the booth that I'm doing quarter glasses, door glasses, windshield on. So that's going to be a little fun. I got a couple house windows, got a second story, uh, residential window to do. So that's going to be a, a new, a new challenge for me. Okay. So a fun week, a fun week ahead of me for sure. There you go. What you got working on this week, Drift? Uh, this week, making some money. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. um, no, nah, um, I'm I'm finalizing the the new business stuff and trying to get some, trying to get the uh, the name out there and get some cards and info out to the to my city here. That's and what um, up. yeah, try and lock some new accounts in. Yeah, that's what's up, man. What about you, James? What are you working on this week? Uh, I think we have a total of four RV windshields this week. Uh, yeah. We've got six at Tesla to do. Um, and then there's some things sprinkled throughout, like Jeff has got the classic car. we got a 66 Chevy pickup we have to do. Windshield, back glass, and wing vents and two door glasses on. Uh, That's what's up. Sound like y'all got a real busy week, man. Um, so, hey, yeah. hope y'all kill it and all the, all, the, all the jobs go successful with no hiccups. And, um, yeah. Yeah, we appreciate all y'all's uh, – 
knowledge, expertise, insight. And um, if anybody want to get on the episode, drop a comment below. Get on. If you got questions about something that was said, drop a comment below. We're trying to make these things engaging and um, try to help people because, you know, like we say, knowledge is power. So uh, comment you know, below. Yo, if anybody is going to Auto Glass Week and I get to go, how about we all bring our bikes and we ride with Drift? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I've been talking to you, following you on Strava and everything. And, like, I'm a – I'm a BMXer from way back, turn motocrosser, turn road cyclist slash whatever. I love being on my bike. That's that's the one thing I love more than auto glass, really, is being on my bike. And uh, I tell you, man, like if we can all get together and have like a bike gang down in freaking San Antonio, that would be so Dude. Cool. Hey, hey we're here. here. We were in San Antonio. We had uh, so the, the Lime scooters, you know what the Lime scooters are? Yeah. Yep. They were super brand new and popular that first year in 2018, um, dude, we had a gang of people. I mean, we probably had 20, 30 of us rolling down the streets of San Antonio. Yeah. That was fun as hell. Let's do it on bikes. I'm down. Yeah. down. yeah. So anybody who come and drop a comment below so we can all hook up and do some fun, you know, do something outside of auto glass, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, cool. We well, appreciate y'all time, man. Y'all have a good week and kill it on all your on jobs this week. Yeah, you do. You too. Thank you. All right, man. Y'all take care.